Chapter 15 of your book covers information regarding the body's nervous system. And here are some key terms related to the nervous system. Afferent means to carry toward a central structure. Efferent is to carry away from a central structure. And the term ventricle refers to a chamber or a cavity that receives or holds fluid. Um, one of the main components of the body's nervous system are neurons, which are cells that can actually generate an electrical signal and then transmit an electrical signal to other structures. And components of a neuron include the cell body, which is the main portion of the neuron, which contains the nucleus and other organelles. The dendrites, which are small branches, which you can see here, all these small branches off of the cell body that carry nerve impulses in toward the cell body. And then here is the axon, a single long process that extends off of the cell body and it carries nerve impulses away from the cell body. Neuroglia are cells that support neurons and there's various types of neuroglia. Each one has a, has a different and specific function. And here are the major divisions of the nervous system, central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Um, so the peripheral nervous system is composed of all of the nerves throughout the body, cranial nerves and spinal nerves. There are um, 12 pairs of cranial nerves that extend out of the base of the brain. And there are 31 pairs of spinal nerves that extend out of the spinal cord. Um, and then the further divisions um, within the peripheral nervous system, there's afferent and efferent. We talked about what those two terms mean just a minute ago. Within the efferent division, which is also known as the motor division, there are two subdivisions, somatic and autonomic. Somatic division uh, controls voluntary movements of the body, and the autonomic division controls involuntary movements of the body. So now if we look at the um, central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spinal cord, we'll look at the brain and the, the four main regions that it contains. So first, the cerebrum. That's the largest portion of the brain um, where most of processing occurs. This is responsible for sensory perception and interpretation, also language. It controls voluntary movement, memory, reasoning, planning, judgment, and personality are all controlled here. Next is the cerebellum, which is the second largest portion of the brain, and it's responsible for controlling coordination and balance. Then the diencephalon, this is like the central portion of the brain. Um, and this helps to regulate involuntary activities. It also controls the pituitary gland, which is one of the major endocrine glands in the body. And then the brainstem is the most inferior part of the brain and it has three structures, um, the medulla oblongata, pons and midbrain. And this area is responsible for controlling respiration, heart rate, and blood pressure. So this is a very important uh, part of the brain. And then the spinal cord is responsible for transmitting information between the brain and the rest of the body. There are some protective structures that surround um, or are located within both the brain and the spinal cord. The meninges are three connective tissue coverings that surround and protect the brain and spinal cord. Cerebrospinal fluid, also called CSF, is a watery fluid located in the spaces within the brain and the spinal cord, which are also known as ventricles. Um, it also, this fluid also surrounds the brain and the spinal cord. And then there's the blood-brain barrier, which is a protective mechanism that blocks specific substances from entering brain tissue from the bloodstream. Um, so now I will just get into some of the pathology related to the nervous system. 
Um, the first thing is radiculopathy, which is inflammation of a nerve root that's associated with the spinal nerve. And um, people with this condition often experience tingling, numbness, weakness, and pain. A cerebrovascular accident is also known as a stroke, and that's um, typically caused by insufficient blood supply to the brain. An ischemic stroke specifically is caused by narrowing of the arteries supplying the brain, which leads to decreased blood supply to the brain and also decreased oxygen getting to the brain. Um, it can also be caused by a blood clot, which blocks the blood vessel and has a similar effect that it decreases blood flow and oxygenation. So that insufficient oxygen supply can lead to brain tissue death. Um, so that's, that's shown here. You can see a, a blood clot in uh, one of the arteries supplying the brain. Over here is what a hemorrhagic stroke would look like. This is caused by the rupture of an artery supplying the brain. So now blood accumulates um, in this area and it can compress brain tissue, which causes it to die. Signs and symptoms of a stroke, sometimes hemiparesis, which is weakness in one half of the body, or hemiplegia, which is paralysis in one half of the body, aphasia, which is an inability to speak, and ataxia, which is loss of muscle coordination. Um, epilepsy is an example of a seizure disorder. This is um, chronic or recurring seizures, and this can result in changes in brain function or changes in consciousness uh, or behavior. Parkinson disease is a progressive neurological disorder that causes the de degeneration of neurons in the brain. And it can lead to, or, or symptoms of this can be slow movement, also shaking, tremors, a shuffling gait where there's difficulty picking up your feet, and a mask-like facial expression. Next is multiple sclerosis, which is also a progressive degenerative disease that affects the central nervous system. It is actually an autoimmune disease where the body's own immune system attacks its own cells. Specifically, it's attacking the myelin covering on neurons that are located in the CNS. Alzheimer disease is another progressive neurological disorder that causes mental deterioration and memory loss. And with this disease, there are plaques or hard, hardened areas that develop within the brain, specifically within the cerebrum, um, and they can disrupt communication between neurons. All right, here there's some more diseases and conditions. Agnosia is difficulty processing sensory input. So um, auditory, visual, olfactory uh, input, things like that. Asthenia is a loss of strength. Ataxia is a lack of muscle coordination. Coma is an unconscious state with the absence of voluntary response to stimuli. A concussion is a brain injury as a result of head trauma. Dementia is cognitive and memory deficits. Dyslexia is the inability to learn and process written language. Hydrocephalus is the accumulation of fluid in the spaces of the brain. So that would be within the ventricles. And that leads to increased intracranial pressure. Spina bifida is a congenital, so this is something that you, someone's born with, neural tube deformity where the meninges and sometimes the spinal cord protrude from the vertebral column. Anencephaly is a, another congenital neural tube deformity. In this case, it affects the brain. So part or all of the brain is missing. Palsy is paralysis, usually partial, and characterized by weakness or shaking. Paralysis is loss of voluntary movement, but no loss of sensation. Paresthesia is a sensation of numbness or tingling, and syncope is a brief loss of consciousness. Um, this is also known as just fainting. 
And then the last thing here is a few medical procedures. Electroencephalography is the recording of the electrical activity of the brain. And a lumbar puncture is shown here. This is a needle puncture of the spinal cavity to remove cerebrospinal fluid for testing. And another test is nerve conduction velocity is shown here. This is the measure of the speed of nerve impulses along a nerve. And then as far as imaging, there's um, one procedure that is used quite frequently. It's called angiography. And this is a, provides a radiographic image of the inside of a blood vessel. In this picture, you can see the blood vessels supplying the brain. Okay, and lastly, pharmacology, um, just two general types of drugs. Anesthetics cause partial or complete loss of sensation with or without loss of consciousness. And anticonvulsants prevent uncontrolled neuron activity resulting from a seizure.